Arena 36 plus 1 is still the show you're on to. It's our political and current affairs show. And my name is Peace. Organic Bowie. I am your host on the show today. All right, I told us earlier that we will be looking, we'll be joining the world to celebrate the International Day for Clean Energy. And uh, while we join the world to celebrate uh, uh, clean energy, this is a day that has actually been set aside to look into some of the challenges of clean energy and how we can face and fight or bring or make it better. Uh, you, you agree with me that the world at the moment is grappling with climate change and uh, talking about we cannot talk about climate change without talking about the effect of clean energy which plays a pivotal role you know in reducing emissions you know that can also benefit communities and the climate as a whole uh, report has it that um, coal oil gas we um, generally fossil fuels are responsible for nearly 90 percent of global carbon dioxide emission at the moment and i can tell you that um, these still dominate you know the global energy production now uh, many people many countries are looking towards um, finding a way to reduce um, the use of fossil fuels nigeria inclusive and so today we're going to be looking at harnessing the potentials of clean energy in nigeria i still have my guests uh, both are energy experts and of course uh, boss uh, felix omokaro and boss Emitu or Rizzi. Great to have both of you still in the arena today. Thank you. All right, so let us get into the conversation. But before we get into, con into the conversation, might I let you know that uh, this conversation is or can also be listened to wherever you are in the world uh, via our online stream platforms. We're on Radio Garden at Boss FM 95.5 Abuja, online radio box at Boss FM 95.5 Abuja. And you can certainly go to our website at www.bossfm.ng and you can definitely catch us live right there so tell your friends tell your family members that they can join the conversation right in the arena as the arena has gotten bigger okay um i'll i'll start with you uh boss uh felix omokaru where we are right now as at um, today our production of uh, power has dropped to 3300 over uh, about 3300 megawatts and we're still grappling with high tariff. The power uh, stakeholders are still asking themselves, should we increase the tariff? Should we reduce the tariff? Uh, the federal government is talking about subsidy. Over 1.6 trillion naira is being paid on subsidy for power, you know? And all this energy crisis is still happening. We're still with this, and this is just talking about energy gotten from hydrocarbon. What do you have to say about our state let's, at the moment? Let's just say that the electricity reform or the power sector reform has not worked in this country at all. Mm. Um, we, it was said or it's been said that the um, sector has been privatized, but basically it has not been fully privatized. The transmission company of Nigeria is still wholly owned by the federal government. Mm. And um, the federal government still has stake in the distribution uh, and the discourse. Mm. So um, I think generation has been fully privatized. Um, but the point mainly is the intervention or the reforms have not worked in any way. Um, so that's why you see a lot of Nigerians having to um, go to self-help, which is you have um, a lot of generators in homes, you have people using firewood, and all sorts of things and um, it's really detrimental to our health uh, we've had cases in the past where generator films have killed family mm. um, family members and um, um, people have to resort to deforestation using firewood for um, to light up homes and mm. cook their meals so really we need um, serious there are, there needs to be serious work in the power sector and i do not know for a fact if this can be done um, in the short or medium term this seems to be a very long-term problem and one of the ways it, it has to come through 
legislation and um, laws that would really, really make this sector work. For example, um, we would always hear in the news that the um, discos are unable to remit the monies the, um, the, that should be paid to the transmission company of Nigeria because they cannot collect revenues from the citizens. Mm. And this is just one of the issues um, because really I always try to look at the other side. Nigerians really cannot afford cost ref reflective tariffs in this country because uh, to be honest the what we, re we really earn can really not do much mm. uh, compared to the western countries where there are cost reflect reflective tariffs citizens are well paid in nigeria i mean if you have um, thirty thousand as a minimum wage which some states are still struggling to pay how do you really um, pay for the true cost of electricity which is really above 100 naira Mm. So, that's, that's a big question yes. to, to look into. So we don't look at the earning power of the citizens. You always look at, oh, just intervene in the sector, let it be the tariffs be reflective of the market prices. But really, even in the developed countries like France, um, there are subsidies on energy. I mean, recently or last year, we saw the riots in France mm. for um, uh, just the increase in um, price of energy. Mm. I mean, and we being an, um, a developing nation, uh, what do you expect? People really cannot afford this. Mm. Now, let's look at the challenge of um, fuel, because just like Boss uh, Omakara has pointed out, the challenges we are facing with uh, power supply in our country has left Nigerians with little or no other option than to fall to um, fuels like petroleum and oil and all that. Now. Even that has become a challenge in our country. F by May 29, 2023, we were inaugurating a fresh administration that was telling us that at the, at the time, subsidy was out. This was something that has been difficult, in court, you know, to stop by previous administration. But by one word, that ended, you know, and it gave rise to... Um, you know, the, the advent of CNG as a compressed natural gas, which up until now, we've not been able to implement, to, at least to, to an extent. We've seen plants that has been inaugurated and activated to begin to work on conversions and all that, but we've not seen the full implementation of this. And the fuel is still going we're still having fuel uh, marketers oil marketers you know and um, sellers and everyone complaining or saying that this should be increased and all that npc saying no don't increase so i'm saying yes we increase the new private refining saying we'll pay we'll sell oil in dollars you know while we are here in nigeria you know and all the things around the fuel and of course it is looking as though there is no way out. If we have, um, the, the normal oil and gas is not, have, is not helping at the moment. So what, what, what should we, what, 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 where, where do we stand in this country when it comes to uh, being able to um, see, use, you know, fuel and energy? Okay, um, I would I would want to stay away from the subsidy conversation because um, <laughs> it's um, because even with even with the statement you know from from last year, mm. I think if you look at if you look at what is actually happening, I do not think I think there's still some form of subsidy around somewhere. Otherwise, by now, you notice like in Abuja here, um, the queues pop up and disappear. What you're basically seeing yeah. is the pushback, you know, we need to push the price up and all of that. If government doesn't do something, the price would actually need to, that means the actual landing cost of PMS will actually need to go up. Um, the, 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 it, it's not, it's an interesting time, I must say. Mm. It's, it's an, it really, really, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time um, because um, we, are, we are grappling with um, high inflation. We're grappling with high cost of, um, of energy. We're also grappling with um, the, the Naira, the, the Naira basically being devalued by the day. And being a consumer-based, a highly consumer-based nation, we are not producing anything. We have, we have a serious problem on our hands. 
But but that said, I want to take I want to take you from what uh, my my colleague in the in studio said about the issue of um, of um, Nigerians being able to have, afford power. Um, you know this. It, 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 when, whenever I have this conversation, it's almost, almost like a chicken and egg situation because you need power to innovate, you need power to develop, you need power to industrialize, mm. and um, people will do more if there's power. So that means that we can see us, we can see small businesses do more. You can see the little barbing salon there, the, the lady that produces um, some form of um, drink, whether it's Zobo, whatever, she can do that. Mm. The woman that is a hairdresser, she can do that. You know, you can see little things pop up. So. In actual fact, um, the challenge is that the lack of avail availability of it. So which one comes first? Does the power come first or does the industrialization come first? Or does that empowerment come first? And that's mm. where that's kind of that's kind of where the, the, the bottleneck um, is. But people are paying more for power. Nigerians generally are not paying. I mean, the minimum wage is really not what's determining what Nigerians are paying for power because people need power anyways. So people have gone, you know, the extra mile to find how, you know, find ways and sources in which to pay to pay to pay for power. Mm. The challenge is that they are paying for only what they can, you know, they can use or they can afford to pay, and they are doing doing with that what they can do. Um, but it will be interesting to see. It will be interesting. Nigeria is good for for policies. Um, so we are not we are not in any way failing when it comes to policies. There are so many policies. Whether it's the it's an energy transition plan, there's an energy, there's a national efficiency. Um, there are so many plans everywhere, you know. Mm. And the, the challenge, one of the other challenges we have is that every administration comes up with a new policy. with a new policy. Well, not a, not necessarily new, but at least they go tweak it up. You know, they they you know dust it up, change it one way or the other, make it their own. Mm. There's no reason. I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be continuity. It should be continuity. I mean, a lot of work, a lot of money has been spent to develop these things. It doesn't make, well, I mean, it's Nigeria. Maybe it's another way or another ploy for people to come and now, you know, re-engage consultants to do the same thing that has already been done when you can just take from what's been done and now look at actually implementing. Mm. Because the challenge really is really implementing. Mm. When it comes, we've said these things over and over again. We've talked about um, the poor infrastructure, power infrastructure. We've talked about power theft. We've talked about the inability of the discourse to, we talked about um, prepaid, prepaid billing, all of that. All of, though these are problems, you know, Nigeria, sometimes we try to make problems look as if they cannot be solved. I'm one person that feels that let's take things one at a time just take it you know let's take it let's just look at it and let's try to de let's deconstruct the problem and try mm. to solve one problem at a time mm. if it's the problem of the power infrastructure what is required i mean there have been so many um what i call it um inferences people are sabotaging the process you know they are using it to, to to steal money and all but really how complicated can it really be to actually fortify our power grid? Mm. Um, is it? It's taking us years since I could remember. I mean, I'm, this is I don't know how many years it's been now, been in the in the sector. But even before I even graduated, with this problem has been there. Mm. I mean, it cannot just be an impossible problem to solve. You know, I'm one person that feels that probably is because. Maybe maybe our our weather is part of our is part of reasons why we've not yes yes I I, I mean wow. it because because when you look at the when you look at Europe or the West you realize that they had to solve the problem otherwise take Japan for example take um, some of those countries those countries if you don't if there is no power people die hmm. if heating goes out people die so there is no it's not a it's not a question of if you want to you must. So because we don't have that scenario here, that's why probably we can keep dragging, we've been dragging this for years. Uh, well, we're not the only country that um, has the weather that we're talking about. Even our neighboring Benin Republic has the weather, but I mean, at least to an extent, their power uh, matters is not as complicated number, as... Number. Number, number is another thing. Number is another thing. Okay. Number is another thing. No, uh, looks we've like talked the, about, you know, it does the, the challenges are coming out. Uh, yeah, we've talked, talked, we've talked about talked weather, about, now it's yes. number. So the demand, mm. so the pressure, the pressure, is the pressure is the pressure on the grid mm. is the pressure on the grid so when um if you look at um if you look at demand-based forecasting for example like they call it what basically that means that once you pull demand supply the power supply has to meet the demand mm. once there's a mismatch in that you know stand the frequency goes up the power goes up whenever you see a blackout what's simply happening is that we're pulling more than the grid can supply and then the grid breaks and then everything just strips off so, so I'm trying to understand this as against um, the fact that uh, we supply some of these countries. 
but that will be another discussion <laughs> for another time <laughs> if we have to totally talk about the number i mean you've not been able to satisfy yourself but you're giving out well that's amazing but let's look at them um, of course um, the theme for this year's celebration is clean energy for all and for our planet we are grappling with the effect of fossil fuel and we've not been able to leave that out of the uh, out of the picture at the moment do you think in all sincerity do you think with everything we do the plans the policies and all that that we are really genuinely interested genuinely interested in saving our planet our climate from the effects of the bad fuels the bad energy that has been released the combustion that is going on in all um practical sincerity uh, we're, we're on two sides of the table well, mm. I say we're on two sides of the table because um, when you're telling a man that has not eaten about saving the planet, the man needs to be alive for that saved planet. Mm. I don't know if you get the conversation. So um, when we look at, um, so I, I like to look at it as more of, Ni more of Nigeria's strategy against the, against the strategy of maybe the, inter maybe the rest of the world. We have to infuse ourselves into that, into that approach. In terms of sustainability and all of that but there are also immediate problems that we are grappling with mm. um so for example there are agencies in this country that have to do that man the what we call the um the green wall yeah. you know trying to prevent desertification and all of that mm. and one of the things that they will tell you is that in planting a tree um you have to do livelihood because if the person that is there who you're spending thousands of naira or dollars you know to put a tree you know to prevent desert encroachment hasn't eaten he would cut he will still chop down that immature tree to do whatever it is that they need to do even though it doesn't solve its problem his, his, his or her problem so that's so that's so that's the thing so is there is there a concern yes we want to do we want to do we want to do right we want to be we want to join the entire world to save the planet the planet needs to be saved it's important mm. um there the, the the challenges are inherent whether it's from health challenges to all of that um, but they are still the man has to be alive so there's a dimension of livelihood that comes into the equation which now makes it look as if we don't care about it but i think i think genuinely we do but the question now is about again implementation and you know the approach do you think we care also no Carol. i mean i mean last year we were over 400 at cop 28 government figure that doesn't show we care that's just a number to visit um, another <laughs> country um nigerians care but you know Niger nigerians right now are really battling with a lot of problems i uh, mean security the economy um so we care but um, i think we have much more bigger challenges on the table right now mm. and to be honest um um the issue of um, desertification or climate change actually is um, contributes to insecurity in one way or the other. Uh, but basically, we care, but we're just overboarding with other things, right? So, do you think uh, at the point where we are right now, do you think we are ready to unearth whatever potentials clean energy has? Yes. Um, Although the clean energy sector is not as um, structured in a way that um, it's really formal, but a lot of Nigerians are actually pushing that, pushing not just the narrative, but the um, technical economic benefits for clean energy. Um, you can see a lot of solar installations going around, um, even in Abuja right now, which you know is one of the forms of so that's one of the forms of clean energy. So um, on the on that level, we are doing that. And the government on its part actually has a roadmap for mm. clean energy. Um, so in, in like in some countries, in China, um, I think in Chile, um, right now there's even a hybridization program where you have the solar connected to the hydro dam. So, when in the dry season when you don't have uh, much rain the, the solar itself um, is able to supply a lot of the electricity uh, in the daytime to the national grid while at night the hydro can come so it just balances things up and um, so technologically advanced yeah we are not like some of the advanced countries but we are doing our uh, part mm. 
You talked about um, the matter of livelihood. I mean, if you have to begin to solve a problem, you talk about the people that, you know, the livelihood of the people that is in, in it also. What, can you share with us, you know, some uh, potentials that we can find, that we can take hold of as an individual, as a country, when it comes to clean energy? Because uh, one believes that uh, if we're talking about livelihood, one of the things we should be talking about is how can we also unrest? Because if you're able to, if I'm able to find livelihood in this thing, I would appreciate it more, and it becomes better for us. I mean, there's 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 a, there's a lot of there's a lot of potential now. Um, again, these these things have to be planned. You know, change change has to be planned. Um, I was in Germany in 2011 when they came up with their anti-nuclear policy to basically shut down nuclear power plants. But that was 2011, and I think the plan is to have the last one go down 2025. So I think, um, yeah, there should still be maybe one or two that are still operational, but they are winding down, and then 2025 becomes there. So you can see the amount of time it takes them to implement mm. such a policy. Um, we are not driving the technology. I'm saying that as, a, as someone that has played in this space for 10 years, and I've seen um, equipment that we want, equipment that we can, that doesn't really, is not localized to us. So our problems, so for example, in Europe, um, they are talking about cost efficiency of, of energy or cost efficiency of power. Here mm -hmm. we're talking about the lack of availability of it. In Europe, you're looking at, you can do what is called net metering, where an individual can send power back into the grid. So you can here that's not even possible. The grid, that is, that is a non-existence. So, so, so we're talking about the localization of it. And the reason why we don't have that is because um, we, we're not producing anything. Um, we're not even able to adapt the technologies that are handed over to us. So in terms of, in terms of um, the opportunities, there are so many opportunities. So let's talk about the fact that if the government as much as just, um, well, if we're able to solve our one, again, power problems, cost of doing business, ease of doing business, security issues, then you can bring the industries. So that way, these equipments can be produced in country. So if you do that, you're looking at jobs. Um, you talked about, somewhere, somewhere earlier on, you talked about CNG. What have we mm. looked at? If, for example, I will not retrofit my car, the reason is simple. Where is the technician that will fix it if there's a problem? Mm. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Mm. They do not yet exist. The skill sets, the skill sets is we're not yet there. We're not yet at par in terms of being able to, if we're able, going to fix, first of all, the retrofitting process, I don't even trust it because I need to begin yeah, to get set, yeah, set, yeah. safety concerns for it. So the standardization of that process. So these are all, all when you see these challenges or gaps, these are opportunities. So there are skill sets. So we need to start seeing our universities, our engineers being taught, being trained to do these particular things. Technical, our technical people being trained, being taught. So these are, you are creating jobs on mm. one hand. Mm. On the other, on the other hand is that a lot of these clean energy sources, first of all, quite right, the initial upfront cost is, is quite, is quite burdensome. But once you get into once you get into it, you realize that you are basically on a on the right. Let's take let me take clean cooking for example, and talk about cook stoves. Now, um, in the north, which is basically plagued by who those are people that are using cutting down trees, using firewood, they, you know whatever they can afford. Some of those communities are farming communities. If they are using something like probably briquettes or pellets or whatever, which is basically made from agricultural waste to cook in an improved improved cook stove. That means they will not need to leave within their community there. They can make the fuel that they use for cooking. Everything is recycled. Mm. So that is another opportunity in itself. Again, the opportunity to, first of all, who produces the stove, who maintains the stove. Now there's a whole opportunity for sales and distribution of the stove. Immediate responsibility, immediate, immediate um, opportunities are opportunities around um, basically sales of this equipment. So people, mm -hmm. I mean, we have quite a number of people that are already bringing in some of this equipment into the country. We've not even talked about the issue of energy efficiency and appliance efficiency. Again, we're not the ones making the appliances, so we can't talk about can't, that. Um, but, but I mean, there's still opportunity there. We saw when we moved from the incandescent bulb to LED LED yeah. lights, yes. and then that there's still a massive drive on on that front. So whether mm. you are involved in, so I mean, for for the for for maybe for more, not so much of small scale but medium scale people who can get involved. I'm not sure if there are factories that are producing those things in country, but if the LEDs are now produced in country, still again, opportunities are there. On the solar PV, I think solar, solar, um, solar for homes in terms of solar home systems and small solar systems have, they are, they are gradually. I mean, we are not, we are still far, but we're seeing a lot of traction, you know, on that, on that front. Opportunities again for, for 
it's going to come because it's now people everybody's crying you know mm. companies are crying we've seen a number of companies exit nigeria on yeah. the basis of whether cost of doing business or power or all of that so we will now need to begin to see i mean there, there, there are also plans for to see solutions that allow industries you know that have to do with a lot of things like heating and all that use use um, clean sources so if for example they are they are forced you're already burning and all that there's a lot of conversation there's conversation around electric vehicles some might say it's far-fetched you might be surprised there's conversation conversation around um what do you call it now um so electric vehicles so th these things are these things are all there the good thing about technology is that it's not going to it's not 100 percent going to change everything but for anybody looking for an opportunity this is the time this is the time to begin to look in the direction mm -hmm. either in building your skill set if you are as a as a young person looking at building competencies in the in the in the in the sector if you are a business person government is there is not just not just the Nigerian government there is there is international funding you understand for this subject of sustainability climate change and all of that True. so you're sure that you're going to be finding companies looking to do not foreign companies looking to do projects in nigeria whether to offset their carbon footprint or things like that so there's opportunity so there are opportunities question mm. is um you have at this point where we are you have to really be bold and you have you're going to have to weather quite quite a storm mm. you know but at the end of the day do first you're going to have first mover advantage if you get if you go now so people are already playing in this space but there's a lot a lot and a lot of opportunities mm. now the, the question i have for you boss some caro is with these amazing opportunities you know and nigeria is grappling with uh, death payment debt payment we are grappling with um, challenges of oil and gas and opec and you know everything Brent oil and WTI, you know, determining how much we sell our own oil, you know, and all that. There's just so much um, to talk about when it comes to the oil and gas segment, sector at the moment. And seeing something that is um, so clean, so, so, so good, if I have to put it that way, is it that we lack the political will to delve into this? Or we just are not ready, you know, to look towards the 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 future when it comes to clean energy because it's as though we're still putting our eggs you know since 1976 or thereabouts where or when oil and the oil boom came in and everything we've still been putting our eggs okay let's let's look at it from this angle i think um the former there was a um the former minister of state for petroleum um talked about uh decade of gas which is um, basically Nigerian government was talking about a just energy transition which means um, you cannot expect the West which has over the years polluted the earth um, compared to we African countries to mm. also just move directly to clean energy because there's a cost to it and um, we might have been or we might have the natural resources um the west just takes it from us and processes it um why we've not be able to develop our industries over the years is it's a topic for another day but um so the just a just energy transition basically says that look you cannot impose the same standards on we as africans um to just move to clean energy mm. although we have the natural resources we have a lot of sunshine and if you look at it countries like germany and france are actually using a lot of clean energy or um or let's say some like solar but they don't have as much sunlight as we have in in nigeria but as he said um the we don't have the technology we basically are a consumer nation so we bring in every single thing and um i need to state something about um like um, apart from solar and um, wind we have things like biodigesters so yeah. what people do is instead of having a soccer in your house you can have a biodigester which um, there's a place i visited in worry that's um, pinned it's called pin data center so basically everything in that facility runs on clean energy so your gas to cook um, your heating and everything comes directly from clean energy there's nothing um, that has to do with some um, unclean source of energy 
in in such a place so there are initiatives or or or, or reforms going on in the sector um, but usually these are not well known we just look at um, what the government is doing but there are other things that are being done in the sector that's outside um, the mainstream media what the mainstream media knows about mm. so how do we move forward um, so basically we have to start with education um, a lot of people don't know about um, the effects of fossil fuels and most people don't know about um, the technology of clean energy um, like experts in the field we can tell you that there are lots of people in the sector that will tell you they can do certain things but basically have no knowledge about mm -hmm. it there are just mm -hmm. a lot of quacks in the sector um, people that can wake up tomorrow morning um, due to the economic situation and just pick up um, a screwdriver or something and come to your house and tell you oh i can install solar so we need education on that and legislation so both have to go hand in hand because um, you need the, the competence, you need the capacity to do these things. We don't need to be in a sector where after um, um, six months, one year, and every single thing, every single money you spent on goes down the drain. It just collapses, makes mm. no sense. So we need to think in the long term. So moving forward, we need education, we need to educate people in the rural areas. Um, I've been, I've built a number of mini grids and I can tell you that in the coastal area in Nigeria, I can tell you that the national grid cannot get to some of these places. It's, it's not going to happen in even in the next 30 years. Oh. So you go by boat for about two hours. Mm. So there's no way, it's only the only way that you can provide access to energy for these people is through clean energy. So that's using solar mini grids. Um, so you have communities of about 500 to 1,000 people, and some of them have never seen lights in their lives wow. uh, until those solar mini grids um, got there. And um, some of these initiatives of using clean cooking stoves and um, um, what you have also um, solar solar home systems as well um, so um, sometimes we go there we have this community outreach community engagement we educate the people on the harmful effects of fossil fuels and the advantages or benefits of clean energy um, so that's one way or one of the it's really an essential way to move forward on this clean energy education mm. awareness is very very important mm. what were your final words as we join the world in the celebration of clean energy okay, um it's it's like like i've, I've reiterated there's there's a lot of potential um just to let quickly lend a voice to this issue of um of where we are as a, as a country so we're seeing also the fact that um the base our base demand our base requirement for energy is not yet covered and um even for the West, it's just you don't you don't their base demand is not covered by clean energy. So they have um, they have gas fired um, gas fired um, plants, a number of other sources, the hydro that provides that um, that base requirement, and then things like solar that are more volatile, they now provide what's on top. So the approach our approach can also not we, we still haven't fully maximized our our hydro potential. So that's also another to cover base to cover our base our base demand. And we now start talking about you know what else you know but i think my final thoughts will be the same will will, will, will be for us to you know let us um, I, I really would want to see problems being properly deconstructed and not so much of not so many dis what i call in distractions because like i started the show with you know they are good at throwing distractions in the pot they're just throwing a distraction but they are they are essential problems you mm. know if access to energy is a problem let's tackle access to energy mm. you know and then we focus on that um, right now this clean energy um a colleague here has talked about the issue of legislation this legislation also we're talking about implementation we're talking about standardization whether it's standard of of um, of, um, of personnel standardization of equipment and all of that kind of stuff i also want to see, we also want to see you know like they did within this local the local in the oil and gas sector where we basically find try to create an environment to mandate companies to come and build plants here whether it's um, solar panel producing plants exactly. plants for inverters the batteries mm. for so take batteries for example 
Most of the warranties on the batteries are ineffective because for they to be effective, you have to send back to the producer of the battery. Mm. So when you look at that whole process, the process is dead on arrival. Mm. So it would be good to see, you know, to, for me, it would be good to see that these things begin to, you know, everything begins to take shape. And, but I mean, there is, there is quite, there is quite a potential. Okay, yeah, finally, the banks. We want to see our Nigerian banks put, you know, put put their back, you know, put their back in the game, because a lot of projects are a lot of projects. You cannot do a dollar-based project at this with this kind of volatility of the naira. The project is dead before it even starts. Mm. So what we're seeing for certain projects which have a large capital outlay upfront, you cannot do the project because the, it's indexed against the dollar. Mm. So if you take a facility or take a loan and you have to pay back in dollars, you cannot pay back. In mm. fact, if you were to even, the timelines of your project will not work mm. because before you bring in your equipment, the prices have gone up. Wow. So our time is fast spent. Thank you so very much, um, Boss Engineer Emeto Rezi. And thank you so much, um, Boss Engineer Felix. Thank Umakara. you. Thank you so very much for coming to the studio this day. Uh, well, Boss, this much will take on Arena 36 plus one. Uh, it's been a delight being on the show today. And of course, um, next week, Monday, we'll be back with fresh episodes of Arena 36 plus one. Until then, I am Peace or Genegbawe. Have a splendid morning and stay bossed. <laughs>